Good day, fellow investors. I really sat down and thought, okay, how can I give you the most value that I can give in a video? And then I said, okay, to give value, I have to give really something that lasts over the long term and that is the fundamental of investing. In this world of noise, of stocks that will 10x, of inflation, of crashes, I think something fundamental is key. And this is probably one of the most valuable videos that I'll make for you. So all I ask is to click that like button. So if we look at the market, the S&P 500 is close to all time highs. And if you just look at the long term chart, of course, it was better to invest here. Now, with such high also valuations and stock prices, investing is tricky and the question is, okay, how to invest in these exuberant markets? That's what we are going to answer today. Also, if you look at the NASDAQ, a little bit down from the peak a month ago, but that is practically nothing compared to what it has done over the last years. That's almost 10x, 8, 9. That's really, really incredible. Also, if you take a look at the S&P 500 dividend yield, it has been so low only in the craze of the dot-com bubble. So low yields mean low returns. As we have discussed in the Jeremy Grantham bubble prediction video, the only certainty that there is is that as stock prices go higher and higher, your or our long-term investing return will be lower and lower. That's the only certainty. That's mathematical. So the question now is how to invest in this environment, exuberant environment. We have compared it to 1999 and I want to start looking into Warren Buffett's 1999 letters, 1998, to see how did he invest in that exuberant period too. So we're going to go through a few of his letters, 1998, 99, 2000, and then compare it how his portfolio evolved over time. This is perhaps the best you can do when it comes to investing to understand the long-term investment horizon, how income is actually key, not what the stocks do. And then you can see what kind of returns you can expect. Let's start. This is from 1998 and due to high valuations, as Jeremy Grantham said, our future rates of gain will fall far short of those achieved in the past. This is because of size, but also because of the exuberant valuations in 1998. He didn't reach 25.4 percent anymore but he still did good and that's investing and that's the key with investing and 1998 he was working with 57.4 billion in net worth so he's looking at his book value his net worth measure the capital that managers must deploy so you can think it as of your portfolio and that figure at berkshire has become huge. And if you want 15% per year, you need to double your net worth every five years. And that's Warren Buffett's goal. On owning the S&P 500 and index funds and Warren Buffett buying, whatever the future holds, I make you one promise. I'll keep at least 99% of my net worth in Berkshire for as long as I am around. So I don't know where you, many of you get the ideas that he said that he invested in index funds. Nevertheless, let's continue. So this is his stock portfolio. I think he had around 15 billion in cash at that moment, also insurance cash, so keep that in mind. And he had invested 7 billion into the stock market that was at that moment 37 billion. So he did really well, but I want to focus on this because let's say we are now in a position where you have 37 or seven, depending on what you focus on. But let's see how this evolves, how his income, how his money over the stock market flows, because that is the key. So we start with 7 billion in 1998, and then in 1999, several of his businesses lag the market because of disappointing operating results. But despite what those businesses did, he expects that the gain in intrinsic value of Berkshire will continue to do well because of the great businesses there own. And something very important when you own stocks, yes, you get a dividend, but you also own the reinvested earnings and Berkshire 
hidden earnings, look through earnings in 1999 were 2 billion. So 2 billion were the earnings not distributed that all these businesses reinvested in the business for growth. This number now is around 8 billion. So all these businesses pay dividends but reinvest 8 billion for Berkshire a year. 1999, he increased a little bit the investments from 7 billion to 8 billion. The portfolio didn't go anywhere as it wasn't a good year for Buffett. But he said he believed his companies have competitive advantages that will endure over time. And perhaps the most important answer here, this explains, by the way, why we don't own stocks of tech companies. Even though we share the general view that our society will be transformed by their products and services, our problem, which we can solve by studying it up, is that we have no insights into which participants in the tech field possesses a truly durable competitive advantage. So same answer today with all the tech that's going on. Who has the truly durable competitive advantage with the speed that things develop there, it's really, really hard to assess. And he says it that the prices of the businesses they own are not that attractive, but he didn't sell his stocks he kept and kept the portfolio stable and then he sees when it comes to returns something you can apply now the rate of gdp growth will not be three percent likely will be two percent a hypothesized two percent inflation so you have a return of around four percent add the dividend and you are around five six percent depending on the long term outlook you take. And he says, given that interest rates were higher, this is very important in 1999, Berkshire will someday have opportunities to deploy major amounts of cash in equity markets. Because when this was written, this was in 2000, and interest rates on the treasury were 6, 6.5%. So 6% and he compared then the market with 6%. Current rates are zero. So Comparing the market with zero, you have no other options. If interest rates go up, back to where those were, then you know the market is in trouble. But that's also an investing issue that's different. So he knew back in 2000 that it is a clear bubble and that it will crash and that Berkshire will have opportunities to deploy major amounts of cash in equity markets. But we don't know because interest rates are a little bit different now and he just did what he did best a little bit of stocks purchased mid-american energy his foray into utilities electricity some other businesses court business services 2001 he did seven eight acquisitions so he was just buying when he found something interesting by 2000 also if you look at the total common stocks the investments went went up another two billion if we compare it to 1998 7 billion invested, now 10 billion investment. The portfolio didn't go anywhere, but I think that this 10 and this 7 are the actual key. And you have to look at Berkshire's 2000, in this case I took 2002 profits, total earnings, it was around 4 billion. So some of it was reinvested in the businesses he already owned, some of it was reinvested in stocks a billion two billion a year and he was slowly reinvesting and compounding the earnings the companies had 2001 was of course bad for the s&p 500 also bad for berkshire but given what buffett was doing his bad year was actually 1999 when berkshire crashed 30 percent the nasdaq and everyone peaked in january 2000 and actually berkshire over the next year was up 50 percent while if we look at the nasdaq over the same period it was down 71 72 percent so that was a defensive play back then very interesting and very peculiar how when people run away from tech exuberant tech how value comes up 2001 he sold some other positions perhaps it was an acquisition we never know that but total common stock investments went down and also the portfolio went down 32 percent as the market crashed 2002 
he invested something back in the market. The portfolio was still at 28 billion, so the portfolio didn't do much there, but this is again the focus. Again, increasing the investments into the business. If we look, go to 2006, now we have already invested 23 billion. So from 9, 10 billion, he is now five years later at 22. So 2, 3 billion invested into stocks per year over five years. And that is investing. And when you think about how do I invest in this exuberant market, this is the answer. You see what income you have, what available funds you have, given everything else, safety, solved. And then you look for opportunities over a long period of time. That's the key answer. And that's exactly what Buffett did. He just bought when he found something interesting. You can see the portfolio now is way, way larger in positions than it was in 2002. But he thought he want more diversified, of course, because of the size, but he invested his money. 2011, he went to 48 billion invested. It was 22, five years. Now he started investing 4 billion. As the businesses he owned compound, create more cash flow, more float, he can invest more and more. And we are now at 108 billion invested. And this is what Warren Buffett cares. He doesn't care about this because this is just stock prices that went up because low rates. And he hates this, I'm sure. He would prefer this to be close to here so he can buy more and reinvest more. That's the secret of investing. So the key is income. Income from your job, income from your business. And how are you going to invest that over the next 20, 30 years or how you did invest that over the last 20 years. Then you have income from dividends. How are you going to reinvest that? And then you have income from businesses that's not distributed to you. How are those businesses reinvesting it? Warren always says that his businesses invested return of equity rates of 20%. And that is his focus. And he's happy with that reinvestment. So no matter what happens, that's the key income, what are the opportunities, and slowly building a portfolio and accumulating wealth. That's all that Warren Buffett did with a little bit of insurance float on the side, but that's again something you have to see where are you going to get the cash to invest. And the key question here is do you like your income? So think about your income, your process, and it is an equally important part of the portfolio. You have your portfolio and then you have your flows into your portfolio over time. And we talk so much about stocks that will go 10x, so little about something that's crucially important. So I will increase the talks on the income because that's the key when it comes to investing. And I know valuations are stretched. The PE ratio is at historical highs. And every time in history that it was so high, the market crashed. Dividend yields are at historical lows and not leading into much. But Warren Buffett also said in the 1999 interview that if he would was managing 1 million today or 10 million, he'd be fully invested. And anyone who says that size does not hurt investment performance is selling. The highest rate of return I've ever achieved were in the 1950s. I killed the Dow. You ought to see the numbers. But I was investing peanuts then. It's a huge structural advantage not to have a lot of money. I think I could make you 50% a year on 1 million. No, I know I could. I guarantee that. So it's about deploying your income from dividends, from everything, into the best you can find. And you must not be greedy. Maybe you're not Buffett that you can do 50%. Maybe you have other goals. My goal is always I look for those 15% investments. And that's a strategy. And I can still find something around the world. But you have to find what's best for you. If we go to my free intrinsic value template, we have discussed also a little bit of Warren Buffett stocks, Abvi, Bristol Myers, Merck, Verizon. And if we click here on Verizon, this is all downloadable for free in the link in the description below. This is my public list. You can find my premium list on the stock market research platform. But if you look at Verizon, if you look at the dividend that they are paying, the intrinsic value for a 10% return, depending on the growth rate, 
rate. This might be a little bit exuberant, but depending on the growth rate, it's still a good dividend. It's still a good dividend yield. So it is a good investment. And you have to see, okay, how one of these investments, your opportunities from your list, fit your investment requirements. So that's how Buffett invests and this is investing and looking for opportunities and finding something because one is the stock market, the other is 37,000 listed entities out there. There is always opportunities. And there, there is not only the stock market, there's also real estate, businesses, whatever you can find to invest in. So to summarize, Buffett in 2000 was making about 4 billion per year and reinvesting. 2010, he already compounded his businesses made 10 billion. 2021, he's now making 30 billion. This is compounding, focus on the income and you'll have more, more and more to invest every year. Everything else like stock market news like macro like this is just mumbo jumbo and you can see here he was at 7 billion and now he is at 108 billion invested this is because of interest rate everything exploded as interest rates went down but he would have still been here with 18 billion compared to 7 billion and happy to see this at 150 because of the lower prices and he would still have been great Warren Buffett. This is investing. And I hope I have given you a lot of value with this video. I think it's one of the most valuable videos I did. So if you like this value, please click that like button and consider subscribing.